The situation with Boeing's Starliner is getting worse every day. Until now, it was primarily the spacecraft and Boeing's reputation that were at risk, but recent reports are raising alarms about the health of the astronauts on board. The longer the delay, the more severe these health issues could become. In this video, we will delve into these growing concerns and discuss the potential future implications. Before we delve any deeper, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates about Starliner and SpaceX's groundbreaking achievements. Originally scheduled to launch in 2017, the timeline for the Starliner launch was repeatedly pushed back due to a mix of funding issues and the challenges of developing a new spacecraft. The first major setback occurred in December 2019 when an uncrewed test flight failed to reach the International Space Station due to significant software glitches. This failure required a comprehensive investigation and redesigns, which further delayed the project. On June 5, 2024, after years of setbacks, Boeing's Starliner launched aboard a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral, Florida. This mission, known as the Crew Flight Test, aimed to certify Starliner for human spaceflight by demonstrating its capabilities with a crew on board. Astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams were part of this critical mission. Despite the rocky path to launch, Starliner managed to reach orbit and perform the necessary maneuvers to dock with the International Space Station on June 6, 2024. This docking was a significant milestone for Boeing, marking the spacecraft's first crewed docking with the International Space Station. The mission was initially supposed to keep Starliner docked for just over a week. However, soon after docking, engineers discovered several issues, including helium leaks in the propulsion system and problems with the reaction control thrusters. These issues required extended diagnostics and tests to ensure the spacecraft's safety for re-entry. By mid-June, NASA and Boeing announced the first of several delays to the spacecraft's return. Each postponement was due to the need for additional testing and data analysis to understand and resolve the problems. As a result, the mission duration was extended from the planned eight days to nearly a month, with the return date being pushed back multiple times. Throughout the extended stay at the International Space Station, astronauts Wilmore and Williams, along with ground teams, conducted extensive tests on Starliner systems. The primary issue was a series of helium leaks that engineers had to understand and fix. Tests showed that while the leaks had decreased, they persisted, requiring further investigation. The thruster issues were also a major concern. One of the reaction control system thrusters was not functioning correctly during the docking phase. Additional tests were carried out to replicate the conditions and understand the malfunction. Boeing's Starliner mission has been facing some technical issues from the very beginning, even before the spacecraft reached the International Space Station. The first crewed launch, initially scheduled for May 6, was delayed due to a problem with an oxygen relief valve on the Atlas V rocket's Centaur upper stage. This valve malfunction forced the mission teams to halt the launch just hours before liftoff. This was not the first delay. Earlier, in March 2024, the mission was pushed from April to July to give teams more time to complete certification work. The delays continued to pile up as new issues were discovered. For instance, parachute components known as soft links were found to have a lower load limit than expected, significantly reducing the safety margin of the parachute system. Additionally, flammable tape used to wrap wire harnesses was identified as a fire hazard. On June 2nd, another launch attempt was scrubbed less than four minutes before engine ignition due to last-minute computer issues. The ground launch sequencer, which manages critical launch operations, detected a problem that prevented the countdown from proceeding. This led to astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams disembarking from the fully-fueled rocket and returning to crew quarters. Despite finally launching on June 5, 2024, and docking with the International Space Station on June 6, the mission faced more setbacks as we discussed in the early parts of video. Now, NASA made a statement indicating that Starliner's return would be delayed until at least early July. The lack of a specific return date tells us even more about the uncertainty and ongoing challenges faced by Boeing. The astronauts provided positive feedback on the spacecraft's systems and comfort, 
but some reports tell a more disturbing story about the astronauts' health. The delay in returning from space poses significant health risks for astronauts. These include bone loss and muscle atrophy due to the lack of gravity, which can weaken bones and muscles. Fluid redistribution in the body can lead to cardiovascular issues and increase the risk of kidney stones. Astronauts also face sensory and balance problems, space motion sickness, and higher exposure to radiation, which raises the risk of DNA damage and cancer. As of early July 2024, Starliner remains docked at the International Space Station, with no confirmed return date. The ongoing tests and evaluations are critical to ensuring the spacecraft's readiness for re-entry and future missions. NASA and Boeing have emphasized that the extended duration is not a constraint, as the International Space Station has ample supplies, and there are no immediate scheduling conflicts with other missions. When we hear how other companies struggle to meet their expectations, it's hard not to appreciate the one company that completed their project on time, SpaceX. NASA originally picked SpaceX, Boeing, and Sierra Nevada Corporation's Dream Chaser for its commercial crew program. SpaceX received $2.6 billion, and Boeing received $4.2 billion. SpaceX, under the leadership of Musk, developed the Crew Dragon spacecraft. Since its first crewed flight in May 2020, Crew Dragon has successfully transported astronauts to the ISS multiple times. Its ability to launch on time and meet NASA's rigorous standards has set a high benchmark in the industry. Despite receiving the largest portion of NASA's investment, nearly double that of SpaceX, Boeing has struggled to deliver. While Boeing struggles to achieve a reliable spacecraft with the Starliner, SpaceX is making history not only with Crew Dragon, but also with Starship, the largest rocket ever built. As we all witnessed, SpaceX achieved a significant milestone during the last Starship launch by successfully landing both the booster and the Starship upper stage into the ocean. However, there were still some minor issues that needed to be addressed. For instance, during the previous test flight on March 14, 2024, only two of the 13 landing engines managed to relight during the booster's controlled water landing attempt, which led to some engine-out issues primarily caused by liquid oxygen filter blockages. Additionally, the Starship second stage experienced unexpected heating during atmospheric re-entry due to clogged valves affecting attitude control. Looking ahead, experts are optimistic about the upcoming fifth flight of Starship, which is expected to demonstrate further advancements. The next launch is anticipated within the next few weeks, as SpaceX prepares to possibly catch the Super Heavy booster with the chopstick arms of the giant launch tower at Starbase. The prototypes set for this mission are Ship 30 and Booster 12. Ship 30 has undergone several design revisions, such as new vent designs and relocated antenna arrays, and completed its static fire test in early May. Ship 26 had been at the mass's outpost for a few weeks, undergoing a static fire test on the newly built static fire test stand. The aerial views show the flame trenches looking almost new, with no major damage incurred during the test. Ship 26 has since been removed from the stand, placed on its transport stand, and rolled out of masses down Highway 4 to the Rocket Garden. The new structural test stand at SpaceX's masses outpost is rapidly evolving. Currently, the third level of the stand has been completed, and parts for a potential fourth level are already visible. This new test stand is designed to accommodate various tank sizes and configurations, which is crucial for testing the structural integrity of different components of SpaceX's Starship and Super Heavy rockets. The FAA and SpaceX have also initiated an environmental impact statement at Launch Complex 39A in Florida. This process involves a detailed analysis to assess the potential environmental consequences of the planned activities and to ensure compliance with federal regulations. One of the key factors prompting this environmental impact statement is the introduction of new designs for the Starship and its Super Heavy booster. According to the documentation, these new designs include 35 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster and 9 Raptor engines on the Starship. This significant increase in the number of engines requires a comprehensive evaluation of the environmental impacts, particularly concerning noise, air quality, water resources, and wildlife.
The reference to 35 Raptor engines suggests a potential future configuration where Super Heavy boosters might feature 15 inner engines, which would align with the new thrust simulator stand for testing. This setup is designed to simulate the intense thrust and operational conditions the boosters will encounter during actual launches. One of the most ambitious plans for the upcoming fifth flight is to catch the Super Heavy booster using the Mechazilla arms a bold strategy that has never been attempted before. The concept involves using the tower's mechanical arms, nicknamed Mechazilla, to catch the returning booster by its grid fins. This method eliminates the need for landing legs, reducing the rocket's weight, and enabling a quicker turnaround for subsequent flights. Following the fourth Starship flight on June 6, 2024, the Federal Aviation Administration conducted a safety review and updated the launch license to allow SpaceX to proceed with their next flight, set for late July 2024. This approval came with specific conditions designed to streamline the process. The Federal Aviation Administration's reaction to the fourth flight was generally positive, acknowledging that SpaceX had met all necessary safety and licensing criteria. However, the agency continues to monitor SpaceX's operations closely. For example, an environmental group recently announced its intent to sue SpaceX over alleged violations of the Clean Water Act related to their launch operations at Starbase. When we think about the fact that Musk plans to launch 1,000 starships in the future, it's hard not to wonder how he will handle all the licensing issues and environmental people for each launch. This is where the concept of a portfolio launch license becomes crucial. A portfolio launch license is designed to cover multiple launches over a specified period, rather than requiring individual approvals for each flight. This type of license can significantly streamline the process and reduce bureaucratic delays. Currently, the Federal Aviation Administration requires a separate license for each launch. This is time-consuming and unnecessary, particularly for a company like SpaceX that aims to increase its launch frequency dramatically. While working day and night for the next flight, SpaceX is also competing fiercely with other space companies to secure some of the largest contracts in the space industry. Recently, SpaceX, along with Blue Origin and United Launch Alliance, granted a share of $5.6 billion in Pentagon launch contracts. The competition for these contracts is intense. Blue Origin, Rocket Lab, and United Launch Alliance are all rushing to establish themselves as reliable launch providers and finish SpaceX's dominance in the industry. For example, Blue Origin is working on several ambitious projects, including the New Glenn rocket and the Blue Moon Lunar Lander for NASA's Artemis program. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.